Well, another sewing machine video. Imagine that. This one I'm working on now is a, um, it's going to be a Singer 281-1. And um, the only reason I got this was because I wanted to buy, I needed a, a big machine like this to do the work that I do. But uh, after I bought it, I realized that it didn't have a reverse stitch on it. So, at the same time, I bought this Foff because it has that reverse right there, okay? And this is the one I worked on uh, that I totally disassembled, put back together again, that I made all the videos on. Got that stuff and running. So I decided to monkey around with this one. The only thing wrong with this one was that half of this machine uses a wick oiling system and the other half is a wet sump that has a pump in it. And that's why you see that window right there, okay? And if you look down on the top, here's an oil, oil tube. And this stitch, the stitch length, etc. But when I'm doing with this, like say I'm changing all the wicks, and I got the bottom one changed already. Those were pretty easy to change out. And then the ones up here in the arm, they were deteriorated. And you see this stuff like this? Um, I took off a majority of this lint and oily stuff is just from the sewing process. But also, but also, most, a lot of it came from this elaborate um, wick system that was sitting right where my finger's at. I mean, look at the size of that. You got enough, this, this holds enough, this would hold enough oil and enough wick you could lube a Sherman tank with. You know, again, overkill with the industrial sewing machines. Um, I got uh, wick on order for this. And I'll put the exact same thing back in it. Because that's what everything was designed for, was for this size of wick. So, you have this. And this is just... All this I'm showing you is just to lube this stuff, this stuff up here. That's it. Your needle bar, your needle bar, your pressure foot, and then this thing. And then this also goes in there. Okay. Throw that in there on the pile. This also goes into the pile. Okay, then you have this tree of wick. All of that just to lube that. But like I say, this thing, this thing was impacted with that lint that I showed you. I mean, it was just full of stuff. So, but it didn't need to be disassembled like my, like the Foff did. I was, I wasn't planning on making a video and doing this. But I thought, well, since I never took it apart before, it took me most of a day to figure out how, how the thing was put together. So I can take it apart. And I thought it would have been really helpful if there was a video on it. On how to change all this wick stuff. So, when all that stuff comes in the mail, 
I'm going to go ahead and make a video on how to put it all back together. That way, you know how to take it apart and put it together. Okay, we're going to put the new wicks in the sew machine. But since I got the camera set up the way I do f to install this assembly, I'm going to go ahead and install this assembly and I'll show you how to thread the wicks through these holes. And as you notice, everything is done in loops, okay? And, uh, but, see that there's all these loops? And this, this shaft will fit in this hole right where you see this wire coming through, okay? And then that comes out the top of this hole right here, okay? So you thread wire through that through up through this hole through there and and then you grab the loops on the back side of this to help pull it through that hole okay and if you have any loose strands and you got to tie them together make a loop so you can pull those strands together so you always want everything in a loop okay we're working with loops here um, this is a little overkill, but when you take yours out and you have to change it, then you can follow the same pattern that they use. All I'm using is candle wick. That's all I'm using. It's just basic one eighth inch candle wick. Okay. That's all this is. Now what we're going to do is make these loops that you see. That's why everything is important when everything is done in loops. Because you have to pull this the wick through all these holes. So let's say I want to pull a wick through here. Okay. And I got this. It's easier to see on a bigger scale. Okay. And I'm going to use the old wick right here. You're not going to have you're not going to use this size of wick to pull through these holes. But the principle is the same. After I got done putting all the new wick in those uh, brackets, I forgot to videotape it. So I'm going to demonstrate how you do it. So you just take wire. The smaller the wire, the better. Just run the wire through the hole like that. Okay. And you take and you feed the, the wick. Let me get this spread out a little bit more. Take the wick and uh, feed it through the hole. Like about, uh, let's see, I don't want it. There we go. Let's, let's go where there's a stronger part. There we go. Right there. And you know all you get to do is just yank on it and pull on it but since this is a bigger a bigger wick you won't you won't be using this size of wick doing what I'm doing here but this 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 will demonstrate the smaller wicks that you that you're seeing in the thing and you just pull pull through and there's your loop and there's your lubricating loop okay Take out your wire, and there you have it. And that's what you see dangling on these singers. Is that right there? You do it. That's the only way. That's the only way you can make those loops. And everything is done on loops. There's no. Don't try to feed a single strand of a wick through a hole because just, you're just not going to go anywhere with it. It's going to have to be done in loops. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, and then this will be secured with this screw right here. And that goes 
into the top. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just hold on to it tight and just feed it in there like so. When you take yours apart, you'll see how, I mean, you know how it goes in when you take it apart. Okay. This just gives you a reference of what you got to do if you decide to change your wicks. Okay. And then you just got to got to work it in there okay <clears throat> now that we got this installed and I did put my screw up on top I'll show you that in a bit okay now we're gonna put in uh, this wick system remember the old one I took out with all those that old wick like this stuff is ready to that stuff right there is ready to uh, deteriorate and stuff so this is a new style of wick it's a quarter inch it's felt it's wool unlike that's cotton and uh this stuff won't deteriorate. So we stick this into this hole over here where it came out of. Okay. Oh, and how this works, don't forget to make a new new gasket for it. It's it's spring loaded. See this will sit in a machine like this, it's spring loaded, and this will ride against the shaft bearing. So this is how your, your front shaft gets lubricated. Okay. So this is just spring tension against your, your shaft. Okay. Okay, again, we will resort to our long needle nose. And pull that on that side. Okay, for the piece that I just installed, it's that disc right there with those four screws, okay? And to take it out, naturally you remove those four screws, okay? But you want to make sure that you dip this disc is loose, okay? And what I had to do with mine, I had to hit mine with a, with a ball peen hammer, lightly tap it, okay? And knock it loose. And then I was able to gently pry right there. Gently pry that out and work it out. Okay, then you're going to take your wick and loop it around your, your pressure foot. And uh, then you're going to put on your Your holding disc and just put that down on top of there okay there we go like I say when you install your wick you probably get you probably get some stuff that looks like this easier to work with um, but it's just a matter of just manipulating it Okay, now we're going to put in our pressure bar, our pressure foot, after we got your wick, in, your wick holder installed. Here's your clamp for your uh, pressure foot bar. Okay, screws always face out. Okay, this tab rides in this groove right here. Okay, like I say, 
when you disassemble it, you, you see how all this goes back together again. Okay, and that would slide down like so. Now this sits on top of your pressure foot bar, just like so. And then that, this flat, you got a, let me take this out again. You see that little flat spot right there? Okay. That flat spot right where my finger's at is going to go against where this set screw is at. See that set screw up here where my finger is at the very top corner? Okay. So basically you want it sitting in because it's a bent. And see how it's bent? That thing is bent. Okay. You want it bent down like that. Flat flat part towards towards the front and then that just sits on top of your needle bar like so take your screwdriver and go ahead and tighten it down there we go because there's no adjustment to that. Okay. Then we'll take our pressure foot bar. Then we'll reinstall this again on top of this. Again, this goes in that groove. There we go. Now, you might want to tighten that down because otherwise it'll fall out the bottom. Or will it? Yeah, it will. So. There we go. Just tighten it down for now until we get the final adjustment. Okay, I finally figured it out. What you do is you run your needle bar bracket all the way down to the bottom. Okay, just like that. This thing right here what's going on this bottom wick right there and in here there's a little sump oil sump so this will suck up oil and that loop will lubricate this bar at this groove right here okay so this bar gets lubricated What's going to lubricate your needle shit, your needle bar, is this loop right here, and the bottom part will be lubricated by this wick right there, because this will ride up against your 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 needle bar. So that's how that gets lubed. So again, run it down. And that fits in behind that shaft and then that just I'm gonna have to use two hands for this but anyway that's how it goes in let me go that's how it goes in so let me go ahead and uh, use two hands for this I got it installed I took this loop here you see how it screws in into this into your needle shaft guide needle bar shaft guide okay this wick I just tucked in behind. This wick here is, is going to be lubing the bottom part of the, the needle bar. This wick here is going to lube the top. It's going to get its oil supply from the bottom here. Okay. And these two wicks I showed you earlier are going to be lubing this bar once we put it in. Okay. Okay. Then you go ahead and you tighten this to your pressure foot um, bar. Okay. You can just leave it like that for now until the final adjustments. Then we're going to install a deflector to where it doesn't splash oil outside. That's going to hook these two screws up there. 
Then the only thing left to install is your pressure foot spring. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get the needle bar up so just enough to where you could run the machine. I think I'm going to chop that off, this thread. I, there's, I can't see no use for it. Got that tight. Put that screw in, got that tight. We already ran through the loop tucked behind the, the needle bar. That's how it gets its lube. Gets its lube through here. We need to adjust the needle bar tight later. Uh, your pressure foot is installed. That's installed. These, this spring bracket is installed. And that's basically an oil deflector. Okay. Um, the only thing left we got to do is put on this spring tension. But when you do that, don't forget to put the, there we go, that washer fits on this shaft right there. Okay. <clears throat> and then your spring. And then all that gets shoved in here like so. And there we have it. Okay. And don't forget, oh yeah, then we got to tighten up this, um, don't forget to tighten up this set screw right there. There we go. Okay, now we could run it. I got to screw that tension down on that bar to hold everything. But then I'm going to go ahead and uh, pre-lube everything and, and run it. Okay, here we go. Okay. Well, everything's all sopping wet in there. <laughs>